Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. In today's episode, I repeatedly tried telling the big box hardware store that the lawnmower waiting for pickup was not my lawnmower. But they wouldn't take no for an answer. My dad got mad at me for a rule that he created. Go ahead and tell me. Okay. Golden handshake and come back to consult? You betcha. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. I repeatedly tried telling the big box hardware store that the lawnmower waiting for pickup was not my lawnmower. But they wouldn't take no for an answer. So I think this falls into this category, but it all started with me purchasing a lawnmower at a big box hardware store. In the interest of keeping them anonymous let's just call them Rob Lowe, or Lowe's for short. I, I walked in one day looking to finally purchase a new mower, and I was in luck as they had a smoking deal on a display model. Unprepared to be going home with a new mower the day I didn't bring my truck. So I simply asked if I could set it aside and come back in a little bit with my truck. I returned maybe 30 minutes later and picked up my mower and headed home. This should be the end of the story, but weirdly, it isn't. Fast forward about two weeks later and I get a call from Los informing me that my mower is ready for pickup. Confused I replied pardon me? So they reminded me that I ordered a mower about two weeks ago and it just arrived and is awaiting pickup. Now I know most would have seized the opportunity right there but I decided to be a good person and I explained to the employee that no, I didn't order a mower, I bought a floor model and set it aside to pick up later, which I did. The employee thanks me, apologizes for the confusion, and says he'll update the order. Well, one week later they call again, same thing and I once again explain why it's not mine. They did this once a week for three weeks straight, and after the third time I tell the wife I swear if they call me again I'm going to pick up my mower. At this point now I'm just excited, I'm watching my phone, hoping they'll call, because in my mind I've earned it at this point and I want my free mower. Well lo and behold week 4 hits and guess who calls. I am now ready to accept my free mower but I'm also unsure how this is going to play out. I don't know if it's paid for, I don't have a receipt, it seems like a long shot. So I simply tell the employee, I'm so sorry, I haven't been in yet to get it, but I got called out of town for work and just got back and with that said I have no idea where I put the receipt. The employee kindly replies, oh no worries. It's paid in full so all you need is a photo ID matching the name on the order. Perfect. I call the wife to let her know I'm picking up our new mower, she just laughs, still positive that once I get there they won't have a mower to give me. But you'll be happy to know I pull in, tell customer service I'm here for my mower, show them my ID, and next thing you know some guy on a tow motor is loading a brand new, in the box, unassembled mower into the back of my truck and off I go. Still have that mower today. I thought about returning the original afterwards but I just got nervous it would somehow raise the alarms. Then I was going to sell it on marketplace but shortly after all this I had bought a new house and my best friend put in a lot of hours helping me move and he too had been looking for a new mower so I just gave it to him instead as a thanks for helping me. I still ended up with a brand new mower for essentially 60% off and then was also able to pay for movers with the original one so it was still a win-win. I genuinely tried telling them it wasn't my mower, but they insisted it was, and it would be rude to refuse their offer. My dad got mad at me for a rule that he created. For context, my parents never liked me having earbuds in at home so my dad came up with a compromise, I can use them if I am doing housework, mopping the floor, folding clothes, etc. So with the context out of the way, let's get into it. It was about 8.30 p.m., and I was folding clothes. Of course, I have my earbuds in and my dad walks in, yells at me, and tells me never to use them in the house again. Here come the malicious compliance. For the next three months, I would carry my Bluetooth speaker around everywhere I go. And if I had to do any housework, 
I would listen to my podcast or music from that. The fallout, my dad gave me permission to use my earbuds again because of the obscenities that I would listen to. That's my story. Go ahead and tell me. Okay. Hey there Reddit. I love some malicious compliance first thing in the morning. Hope you enjoy this short and sweet story. I work for a meditation and holistic wellness store. Our parking lot is very small and shares spaces with other businesses and so we have marked spots for the different businesses. On this particular morning, a gentleman parked in one of our spots and then proceeded to not come into the store or any of the other businesses we share space with. I went outside and kindly asked him to park somewhere else as there is ample parking throughout the area. He also kindly flipped me off, to which I said if you walk away, I can have your car towed. He continued to flip me off as he walked away and said yeah okay, go right ahead. So I did. The tow company came and took his car. Needless to say, he was super pissed when he got back and his car was missing. Caused quite a scene and asked why the F I towed his car. To which I replied you said to go ahead and tow your car. Besides, it's bad karma to steal someone else's parking space. I gave him the card for the tow company and told him to have a nice day. Happy Friday, jerkwad. Golden handshake and come back to consult? You betcha. My dad was an aeronautical engineer who worked in the 70s and 80s designing a very specific and critical part of airplane engines, specific to thermodynamics in the nacelle. In his heyday, he was one of four people in the world with his level of knowledge and expertise in this particular area of aeronautics. He survived the various downturns in the economy in the aeronautical industry and was well respected worldwide for his knowledge and experience. At one point like 90% of the airplanes in the air used his particular part in their engines. When the mid-90s downturn happened, his company basically forced on him a golden handshake to cut costs. He gladly accepted. What they didn't anticipate is that he was the only person still working in the industry who understood this one particular part, and making him leave left a huge hole in airplane engine expertise of thermodynamics. Airplanes fly a long time, and even 25 years after he started, some parts of his engines were still in the air. Of course his company realized this way too late, and asked him to come back to consult. He's a nice guy, and he negotiated to come back at 3x his former hourly wage to pass on his wisdom. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.